I'll be showing nine new features in Microsoft Teams assignments. This includes assignments on the calendar, social and emotional learning updates, OneNote class notebook features, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is the long awaited and much requested assignments on the calendar. So I'm here in a class team as an educator. I will go up to the top here and click on assignments. I'll go down and create a new assignment. Click create and then choose assignment. Now I'm gonna fill out the assignment really quick. Now I'm gonna set the time due on Monday and I'm gonna change this and make it at 5 p.m. At the bottom there's this new option, add assignment to calendars. And there are a few options here. I can choose students and me, which will add it to both the student's calendar as well as my calendar, the educator. Another one is students and team owners. This will mean if you have co-teachers or other people you've added as owner to that team, they will get a copy of that assignment on their calendar as well. I'm gonna choose students and me. Now I just go up here and click assign. Now we'll switch to the calendar of the educator. I'm here in the calendar and you will see that human skeleton is due at five o'clock. If I open this up, it has a marker on the calendar and I can even have a link to view this assignment right here. So if I click that view assignment link, it takes me right into the assignment for the educator side. You can see that no one's turned it in yet. Now we'll switch over to Alex the student to show what he sees. I'm signed in as Alex, and as normal, I see this assignment human skeleton that shows up in posts. But what I wanna do is go to my calendar and see exactly when the due date is. So I go here, here's my calendar, and there's that human skeleton assignment right on my calendar. If I double click to open, just like the teacher shows, there's this link directly to that assignment. So I can be on desktop or web or my phone, I can get to this and be exactly knowing where my assignment is and when it's due. And there's the assignment for Alex. The last thing for assignments in the calendar, if you wanna set the default to where they go all the time, go here in the three dot menu under assignments for your class team and choose assignments settings. You're gonna note a new setting here, calendar, add future assignments to calendars. I can drop this down and I can set a default and there it's save. It'll set that every single time now for future assignments. The second new feature is the ability for students to attach work directly to their assignments with a phone and just taking a photo. And this works with iOS or Android. I'm here in Teams on my iPhone as a student. And at the bottom, you're gonna see this art assignment, sketching a person and an animal. I'm gonna open this up. Now what I'll do is tap add work. And you're gonna see there's a new option that's take a photo. Let's tap this. That brings up my camera. And here's a sketch of Anya Beasley and Buster Beasley the dog. I'll take a photo. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe I wanna crop it a little bit. Hit confirm and then tap done. It immediately adds that image to my assignment and now I'm just gonna tap turn in. Easy as that. The third new feature is using Microsoft Reflect with assignments. Reflect is a brand new app that helps students recognize and navigate their emotions by providing regular opportunities to share and be heard. And Reflect can help broaden learners' emotional vocabulary and deepen empathy for their peers and provide valuable feedback to educators. And this is something that's just rolled out and now baked into Teams. So the basics of Reflect, I'm an educator here and I'm gonna click New Conversations. Now you're gonna see at the bottom, there's this little heart with little dots around it and that is Reflect. If you don't see it, you can go to the three dot menu and search for reflect. And there it is. Now I've already added this. And as an educator, this allows me to post a little poll in my classroom to gather the emotional feedback. So I'll click this here. Now here's the reflect dialogue. You can ask a question. There's some personal and social questions. How are you feeling? How are your friendships doing today? What does the mood in our classroom feel like? Or learning. And we're gonna focus on assignments. So you could ask questions about what we covered today, your growth in the class, or how you feel about the last assignment. We'll click this. Now this is important, privacy. By default, educators can see the student names and reflections, but their classmates, other students, can see the reflections but not the names. You can also drop this down and say, hey, I'm gonna set this so it's private for everyone, so students won't see anyone else's reflections. But I'll set this one right now where the classmates can see reflections but not the names. You can set the duration of how long you want this little poll to go out, and this is how you feel about the assignment. Students will just click a single little emotion here, and they'll have the option to be more specific on that emotion. Research shows that naming the emotion will help students develop social emotional learning. So as a teacher now, I will click send. And you'll see here, how do you feel about the last assignment? This pops up for all the students. I'm gonna sign in as a student and show what it looks like to fill out a reflect form. 
I'm signed in as a student and you can see how do you feel about the last assignment. Let's say I'm feeling pretty good. I will click this one here, which is number four on the scale of one to five. Now I actually can name my emotion, which is really important. And if I wanna show more, I can drop this down. So there's lots of different options. And again, the research shows the more specific you get, the more it helps with social and emotional learning. So maybe I'm feeling creative. And it also says, thanks for sharing, come back when the class check-in closes. And I'll click done. As a student, if I wanna see what other people are saying, I can click explore. And I'm gonna to go to find one that's already been filled out a little bit, so I'll explore. And you can see I can get a sense across the class, how are other people feeling? So it's really interesting to be able to start seeing these emotions in the class, and that is on the student side. If I had a bad feeling, maybe I go in here, I could go and there's a lot of different options, depressed, concerned, disappointed, miserable. So lots of different options to say how you feel about the assignment. Now we'll switch back to the educator. Now the educator also can explore, but in this case, they will see the names next to it. So if educator clicks explore, I can see the different names of who's feeling what emotion about that assignment. So really interesting data. Now the best part is as an educator, I can go into insights, so the class insights. Now if you haven't added insights, you go up here and you click the plus button and you type insights. And right here, you'll click that. And I'm gonna add it to my class this has already been added, so the insights has been set up. So let's drill into insights. Now I'll make this full screen and we're gonna go into student activity. These are like dashboards that I have for my class. So if I drill into student activity, there's a bunch of things that are happening in my class. Now I'm gonna filter to just yesterday to break up this a little bit so I zoom in. Now, if you drop down all activities, you'll see there's a reflect activity. So I can filter just on the reflect emotions that I've been gathering in the class for my assignment. And right here, I can hover and say, okay, James is feeling bored on the last assignment. This student is feeling successful and uh, hopeless on this one. So lots of different examples of how students have been sharing their reflections in the class. And you can filter by student, you can filter by date, and you can even sort by name back and forth. So this is a new capability for Reflect that just rolled out, and it's great for gauging feedback on not only assignments, but many other things happening in the classroom. The fourth new feature is the addition of OneNote into Class Insights. So if I have assignments with OneNote I've made, I'm gonna go up here to the Insights tab that we added earlier, and I'll drill into Student Activity. Now I have some activity here. I'm gonna filter the drop down here and look at yesterday when I had some OneNote activity. Now what I do is I go to All Activities, and I drop this down, and there's a new option that says OneNote, and it's in preview. I'm gonna click this. Now it filters just on the OneNote activity happening in my class, and this is in the class notebook. So if I hover over Marsha Davenport, I can see she made some edits in the physical science notebook, and you see the notebook, and then the class notes section, and then the lesson summary page. So I can go here and see exactly where she was touching that notebook. I go down to Susanna Snow. She was making edits, and she was working in the projects section, I can see. And so it's really easy to get a sense of what was happening in that class notebook through this insights page. And this is added recently and we hope to expand it in the future. The fifth new feature are improvements to class notebook assignments in Teams, specifically when you're trying to make assignments with just reading content, we're making that more efficient. So I'm gonna to go to assignments and I'll click on create assignment. Okay, I filled out the details of the assignment. Now what I'm gonna do is go to add resources and I'll select Class Notebook to attach the reading page. We'll drill into the content library, that's where I have this page stored, and we'll go into Readings. And then we'll select Algebra History, click this and click Attach. Now here's the new feature, this checkbox, Assign Page for Students to Read but Not Edit. So what this does is, it will put a link to this page that'll go directly to the content library. So instead of assigning a page to every single student in the class, which is just a page to read, this assignment will have a link that goes directly to this page so it saves space and that page is read only and it's always located in that same spot. So we will click this here to check it on. And note, now it disables all the places to distribute the page because it's really just gonna leave that link directly to the content library and it says students can't edit. And we'll click done. Okay, now we will click assign. Now we'll switch over to Alex, the student, and show what it looks like for him. Okay, here is Alex, and you'll note that there's a little card link right here. I can click to view the assignment, or I can go into assignments up here, which I'll do. And there's this history of algebra assignment. I will click this. Now I'm gonna click this, algebra history. 
Note that it pulls up this page which lives in the content library. So I can read this now just like I normally would, but it's just a single page that is in that content library. You can see here, there's the content library link. And if I go into my class notebook, here's this algebra history page that that assignment is linked to. So it's just kind of a nice way to save some space and not distribute a page to every single student if you don't want to. The sixth new feature are supporting link preview cards when you put hyperlinks into assignments. So I'm going to go here and create a new assignment. I've given it a title and instructions, and now I'm going to click Add Resources. I'll go here and choose Link. I've got a link to an MSN article. I'm going to paste that here. Title, and you can see it gives a nice little thumbnail preview, and you can say Include Thumbnail Image. Now when I assign this to my students, they will also see a nice little thumbnail preview like this. So let's click Attach. It gives me the thumbnail right here in the assignment, and now I'll click Assign. Now we'll switch over to Alex, the student, and show that briefly. Here's Alex, and you can also see there's this nice little reference material thumbnail. It makes it a little more interesting and more visually appealing, and if I click this, it'll just launch that article. The seventh new feature is moving parent and guardian settings from a previous location to a new one. So I'm here in my science class as an educator. In the upper right, I'm gonna hit the three-dot menu and choose Assignment Settings. What you'll see is this new parent guardian email. If your organization has enabled this, and that's something the IT administrator has to do. If you want to link to the video on how to do that, it's in the upper right. But right here you can see the switch to send a weekly email for assignments is on or off. This setting used to be in the overall team settings, but it's been moved into assignment settings to make this a little more easy to have all your assignment places. The eighth new feature is a small one, but really useful. If you go to the assignments on the left at bar right here, you can see all the different assignments I've made across the different teams. The icon for each of those class teams is now back. It disappeared for a while, but it's back and it just makes it that much more visually easy to distinguish what team the assignment was made from. And it also shows on the student side as well. I'm here as a student and you can see all the different assignments I have for my classes. This icon is now back. It also shows on mobile for the student and the educator. The ninth and final new feature is the lifting of size limits for attachments that you add to assignments. So I'm going to go here and click Create and Assignment. Now previously, if you would add a resource, there was a 50 megabyte limit. So if you added a video or you had some other large file, if you're computer science and teaching coding, you might have been adding a lot of things. If I click Add Resource and I go to OneDrive, I can now attach a really big file. So if I had a file here that was 500 megabytes or 350 or 200, I could add that or I could upload a video, whatever it might want to be. That limit's gone from 50 megabytes to 500. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.